Welcome back to What Are Tea Nibs with General Disturbance. We've got a rather interesting battle here, in fact a set of three battles, and they're all featuring the Excelsior. In fact, um, you can see three of them in the screen at the moment. The first one belongs to Andromeda of No Retreat, No Risk Surrender, and alongside him is Terry's Tanks and Total Party Bottoms. And we've seen both of them feature in Andromeda's replays before, because they're all in the same clan. Well, what can I tell you about the Excelsior? Well, I mentioned it in the previous video, and I'm afraid I may have started some sort of a craze, uh, or maybe it's not me that started the craze, but maybe Andromeda and some of the other players. The Excelsior is based on the Cromwell tank, and it actually got built because the British weren't absolutely certain that Churchill was up to it after so many of them were lost on the Dieppe raid. So they came about and took a Cromwell and redesigned it, put incredibly heavy armour on the front, a 75mm gun which is capable of doing 110 alpha penetrating 144mm with premium and with standard it will go through 91mm. It's got paper thin armour at the sides but at the front it's got 115mm. That is huge in anyone's book and many of the tier 5 tanks will find it incredibly difficult trying to penetrate this tank. Well you can see Andromeda is just driving straight into the enemy on Pilsen. He's occupying the South Factory, not the North one, the South Factory. He's managed to zoom through with his speed and he's already started to get shots on the enemy. And that Churchill 3, the Soviet tier 5 premium, has already taken two hits. But he's got two back, but he's only got a 57mm gun, which means he's having difficulty trying to do damage. Unfortunately, you can see that uh, Andromeda was trapped while he was at an angle. And the side armor on this tank is not that strong. It's only 31mm, so you don't want to angle this tank if you can help it. Keep the front to the enemy all times if you can. Only side scrape slightly, gently, so you still keep the front to the enemy. Now you can see Andromeda also aimed on to the T6 medium, but now he's manually aiming into the Churchill, and he's making short work of that turret, which is very thin actually, the armor on that. And just look at that, he's going straight through it. Now the gun handling on the 75mm isn't that good, but if you use a rammer and you get close to the enemy, then it does the business. Now they only built two Excelsiors, and one of them is at Boddington Tank Museum, so if you want to see it, it's in the uh, restoration shed, the, um, uh, the conservation centre. And uh, look at this, he's just driving up to these guys. Two shots into the T6 medium, he's toast, the Churchill will die, yes he rammed him. No problem whatsoever. Well, Andromeda's now got two kills and his platoon mates have got three between them and he's now going for more. There are three tanks up on the enemy, but it's still a good game. Birchland goes down to Terry's tanks, I think that was, yes. So they've all got two kills apiece now. And it looks like they're going to go straight for the cap and force the enemy to come back and uh, get killed and get resets. Oh, somebody over there, T-67. Now T-67, he's going to have difficulty trying to pen, but you'll have no difficulty penning him. And there he goes. He's out the game. He blocked a shot from a Marder 38T and there's a Hetzer up on the hill. Yeah, whenever you see a target like that with a big gun, he's obviously got the dirt gun. He blocked a 350 hit point hot shot. So you've got to keep the front of the vehicle to the enemy to stop them penetrating. And if you use a, um, a spawn liner, then you'll minimise the damage to HE rounds. You see, he just blocked another shot. And that was a heat round from the Hetzer. The Marder's now going to die. He's firing HE at this guy. He really doesn't want him around. Yeah, he's not getting great hits, but you see he's blocking everything that's coming at him. And now all the enemy in the vicinity is dead. He now has... Well, two kills, and his platoon mates between them have seven. I 
She ought to mark the names. Yes, it's Terry Stank who's leading with four kills. Total Party Bottom has got three. So you can see that Andromeda needs to get another kill if he's to get a brothers in arms with them. And there's a pair of enemy tanks making their way towards our cap area. 11 and a BT-7 and they're outside of view range. So he's blind firing at them at the moment, which is probably not a good idea. And in fact, actually they started capping, but we're capping at the other end. I think you need to drive up there, Andromeda, if you're going to get the kills. They've only got one in the cap now, so I think somebody has been sent back to try and get a reset. Either that or our arty is doing its job and hitting them. Well, I think this game is going to end very briefly because both his platoon mates are in the cap. And Andromeda's trying to get shots on that BT-7 to get the brothers in arms. Oh, he gets it! He gets it for the last second shot! Wow, that's a fairly heavily damaged Excelsior uh, for the first battle. Let's have a look at the second battle. In the second battle, we can see that this time Andromeda is all on his own on the north spawn of Harkov. And you can see as well that he's got two marks of excellence on the barrel of his Excelsior. Now, it is very much like a overpowered Cromwell, you might say, in terms of its ability. Um, well, it's actually fairly fast. 38 kilometers an hour is not too quick, but it is quite quick for the purposes that uh, he's using it as basically an assault tank, just driving straight through the enemy, getting them to fire at him, straight at him, and that way he can block all of their shots and just do huge amounts of damage to him. His reload time is 3.14 seconds. The reload on the book is 3.64. So he has knocked a little off with a good crew and a rammer. First target he sees is an A20, but he has to go up the bank if he's going to get shots on this guy. Because unfortunately the bank does get in the way. No, I, I, he just can't lift the gun enough to get shots. There's a T-34 down the other end of the road. Puts one in. went to sniper view to actually get more shots but those guys pulled back there's some guys in the um there were some guys in the trench system to our right but they're not anymore and in fact the t-34 gets a 57 millimeter round in them but look at this the way he just drives at them don't get too close so they can try and get alongside you just keep them at a distance and get them to fire directly and they'll miss. And there goes the T-34. Largo suddenly realises, oh my god, this is a dangerous tank. And he's just penetrating this guy, no problem whatsoever. You see, this Largo is going to die. And he even got some ram damage there. And now the Largo's out the game. So that's two kills and 1,183 hit points of damage. He's the only one on the team to actually get a kill so far. Now, he actually turned around on that bank trying to get shots on that A20. Not a wise decision, I think, there. But uh, what you want to do is get behind them, far enough behind them, that you can then turn around and come back and kill them that way. He's almost at the end of the trench system, so you should be able to do that shortly again. Trying to rise up. You're giving flat surface area to the enemy to shoot at, and you don't want to do that. You want to keep your front to the enemy at all times. And he finally gets a nice shot into the A20 water waning on. Okay, get it into that guy's rear. You'll set him alight. He's got thin armour, and he's out of the game. Lovely shot. So that's three kills now. 1,505 hit points of damage. There only one tank down on the enemy. Okay, there are some enemy up on the hill and coming up like this does expose his side armor, which he doesn't really want to do, but he's getting shots into these guys at long range. Oh, now that's a good target. It's a tier 78, that's a tier six tank destroyer. So hitting it with a tier five is gonna do you damage, but the thing is, get you XP but the thing is that he managed to get one round into Andromeda which actually did 284 hit points it was a 90 millimeter round and that's easily going to overcome the 115 millimeters or 115 millimeters of armor so 
yeah, I'm afraid he does have to pull back. In fact, it looks to me like he's decided he has to return to his own gap area because a lot of the team have been wiped out. There's only five left and oh, he meets a T28 coming the other way and rams him to death. Good shot into him, then killed him. Oh, he's got a stood behind him. So he's got four kills now. So I think he's decided to turn around and go back after that Stug, who is in the trench. There he is. Alago's blocking him, but he gets one shot in. Go for it. No, nope, doesn't get that one in. Go for him. He's got him inside. He did ram damage. Now, oh, the kill goes to the Largo. He's decided to turn around and go back to get the T-78. And he lost the Largo there to the M44. He's all alone now against, what is it? Oh dear, nine enemies. And I don't think he's going to live very long against that T-78 because he's down to six hit points. The T-78 put one round in. The AMX-40 is on his side. The poor, poor guy. He's a dead duck if he gets hit. And they just killed him before he could kill the duck. That duck must have flipped himself over, diving into the trench. So unfortunately, this one is a loss. But uh, the T-78 did die, actually, in the end. He did take a round from Ex um, Andromeda just before the end of the game. Uh, but he got killed from behind by an SU-76M. So, uh, that's the end of the first, uh, the second battle, and I'm afraid this one was a defeat. So let's have a look at the third battle. And again, we've got another Excelsior battle, and this time round, Andromeda is in platoon with Total Party Bottom and Terry's tanks from his clan. And they're all in Excelsiors. But just look at that, he's got a mark of distinction on the rear of his vehicle, which is the best place to put it, because the enemy doesn't see it, and therefore they don't realise you're a high priority target. Anyone who's obviously got a lot of kills and a lot of high calibers needs to be watched out for. If somebody puts a, a boasting signal on the front of their tank saying, I've killed lots of tanks, obviously everyone's going to take note of that and shoot at the guy. Well, Tundra, it's a different map. It's not a great map for many people, but there's no arty in this game, so he's... Oh, and he's up against other Excelsiors as well. Looks like there must have been a run on Excelsiors. Maybe they were cheap in the gift shop, or maybe uh, people have realised suddenly that the Excelsior is a lot of fun when played correctly. Well, you can see that um, Andromeda's taking the lead. Total Party Bottom's following up behind. And he's got his first target, so now my baby, John Stewart, the scout tank, the white tank, the honey. He gets his first shot in. He's moving forward. Now, ideally, he should not go around this rock because he would actually expose side armor. And as I said, you don't want to expose side armor because that's where the enemy will penetrate. What you want to do is keep the front of the vehicle at all times towards the enemy. Remember that the uh, penetration on this gun is 91 millimeters with standard ammo. And remember the front of this tank is 115 millimeters. So if they're firing standard ammo at you, they're not going to peg. And that's why you can just drive up to the Excelsior with your, uh, with your tank. And if they keep firing at you with an auto aim or whatever, they're just going to keep bouncing off. Now, if they switch to premium ammo, that's when they will start penning you. But at the moment, he can take care of that Panzer 3J. Total Party Bottoms has come up to get close to share in the action. That's perfectly okay. There's plenty of tanks for everyone to kill. Oh, lovely one. He's got his first kill. The Excelsior. Now, can he get a second one? He is using the premium ammo. Yes, good hits. He had to put a round into that Panzer 3J to try and get him to pull back. But he wants that kill on the second Excelsior. Nope, not this go. Maybe the one after next, if he's lucky. Blocked a shot from the Panzer 3J. The Excelsior goes down to total party bottom. So at least it's 
one in the family. Okay, well, we know that there's a Hetzer nearby and he's firing eight Kyrtus. So he must have the derp gun or he should have the derp gun. And there he is. Yes, it's a derp Hetzer. Now, when he gets tracked, he's going straight for the weak spots. Although he can penetrate the front armor. Yes, he gets another kill. That's two kills for Andromeda. One kill for two tanks and two kills for the turret party bottom. Oh, we tracked him. And he burned his repair kit to get moving again. Okay, they're on the move. Now, it looks like some of the enemy have managed to get round. And they're engaging uh, Terry's tanks at the moment. He's got two kills. But I think that uh, Andromeda's decided he, it, that uh, Total Party Bottoms is okay on his own. And uh, he's going to run back and quickly help Terry's tanks against that Panzer 3J. That's it. Up over the top. Okay, it's a P2640 as well, down by the bridge. Terry's Tanks is getting lots of good damage there. Okay, he's going to go for the P26. He auto-aims on. He'll easily penetrate this guy. No armor, really. And there's another kill. In fact, now each member of the platoon has now got at least three kills. So they're on for a brothers in arms. I think you could say as well that the Celsius is a very good trainer for playing in platoons. If you work together. It is quite a wide tank, but it's a fun tank to be in. And it does have very good DPM. You can see Terry's tanks only got one hit point left and there's only two enemies remaining so I think they're just at the moment hiding whilst the total party bottom is in the cap area the last remaining enemy tanks up on the hill it's a Matilda and he's being assaulted by an AMX 40 if they can stay like this they will get a brothers and arms each and they will between them have 10 kills they won't be able to get the uh, Crucial contribution, but... Oh, it looks like it's about to happen. The Matilda's gone. And it was Total Party Bottom who got the kill shot from the cap area. Meaning they've got 11 kills between them and a victory. So, let's have a look at the end of battle results for the first battle on Pilsen. And here's the end of battle results. And in the first battle, he managed to get a second class mastery, a fire for effect, a shell proof, a duelist... A Hand of God and a Bruiser Medal for getting at least five critical hits. He managed to get six. On top of which, he also managed to get a Spartan Medal for surviving a non-ricochet or a surviving a ricochet or non-penetrating shot when he had less than 10% of his hit points left. He got the Brothers in Arms because, of course, he killed three enemy vehicles in conjunction with his platoon mates, all getting three kills each, or at least three. And he got a steel wall as well for blocking the most damage in that game. His winning for the battle was 5,384. If we look at the team score, we can see that the highest amount of damage in the game was actually done by the Leopard on the enemy team. He managed to get a high caliber for 1,996 hit points. But the next high score on, on the team was Total Party Bottom with 1,569 hit points. Followed by Andromeda with 1,398 and lastly, Terry's tanks with 1,205. When it came to kills, again, I'm afraid it's that Leopard with five kills. Four kills went to Terry's tanks. Three kills went to Total Party Bottoms and Andromeda. And when it came to base XP, it's Andromeda who did the best in that one. 1,263 base experience points to him. He's the only one over 1,000. 985 went to Total Party Bottoms. And 747 went to the Leopard just ahead of of Terry's tanks with 742. We can see that Andromeda managed to fire 36 rounds, but only 15 actually connected with the enemy and only 12 of those actually penetrated. He got three splash as well. Damage of 1,398 hit points, of which 50 hit points were at more than 300 meters. That may have been the shot that killed the BT-7, by the way. 31 hits received from the enemy, only 10 of which actually penetrated, and 21 non-penetrations. He blocked damage of 2,865 hit points of damage. 
Four enemy vehicles were spotted, six enemy vehicles were damaged, three were killed, and 1,097 hit points of spotting assist. He earned 55,104 credits, got 27,552 from Holdy Ops, total of 82,656 credits. But he did fire an awful lot of APCR during that game, and after repair, ammunition resupply, and consumables, he still only ended up with 11,466 credits. He received 1,894 XP, 758 for this being a premium vehicle, and took away 2,652 experience points altogether. So the first game was good. Let's have a look at the second one and see what happened in that one. Well, that was the one where we had the loss, unfortunately. And Andromeda basically was a one-man killing machine because he was the best player on, well, on the battlefield, for that matter. Um, he managed to get an ace tanker. He got a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He ended up with five, actually. A duelist, a fire perfect, and a bruiser medal. This time around, he only got a cool-headed, but he did get the high caliber. And uh, his win eight from the battle was 14,569. Yes, he was doing most of the work, doing most of the killing. If we look at the team score, we can see that, yes, he easily got the highest damage with 3,193. The next highest scorer being the AMD 178B on the enemy team, 1,916, went to him, followed by the T-78 who got 1,627 and a tank sniper medal. When it came to kills, he was tops again with five kills. Four kills went to the AMD 178B, two kills to the T-78, the SU-76M that killed him, and the T-14, that also got two. When it came to base XP, it's the AMD who did the best this time around. He's on the winning team, so his score was higher. 1,151 went to the AMD. 1,044 went to Andromeda because he did so much damage, killed so many enemy tanks. That boosted his score. Plus, of course, he gets the bonus for being on the losing team but getting a Battle Hero medal, which means that he will get the same score basically as the winning team on XP. 724 went to the T-78 as well. Yes, that 90mm gun, when you see one of those and you're in such a tank as the Excelsior, stay away from them because those are the ones who can actually penetrate your armour even though you've got 115mm at the front. He fired 36 rounds in this game, got 30 direct hits and 26 penetrations, damage of 3,193 hit points, of which 110 were at more than 300 metres. I think those were the shots he fired up at the hill. 18 hits received from the enemy, 5 penetrations, 13 non-penetrations, and 3 hits by way of splash damage. He blocked damage of 970 hit points, uh, which was very close, you might say, to a steel wall. But of course, he had to survive the battle in order to get a steel wall. On this occasion, he didn't. Spotted 4 enemy vehicles, damaged 9 of the enemy, killed 5, did 238 hit points of damage assistance. On a premium count, again, he earned 77,742 credits, got 6,300 for Courageous Resistance, that's for getting the High Calibre Medal, and his total came to 84,042 credits, but he fired an awful lot of APCR yet again, and that cost him, because he actually ended up with a loss of 17,770 credits altogether. He earned 1,566 XP, got 852 for Courageous Resistance, 967 for this being a premium vehicle, and took away 3,385 experience points altogether. It was a good fight. He was the only one really actually putting up a solid defense against the enemy. And given enough time and a bit of help, I suppose he could have taken the enemy down. But he was all alone, facing nine opponents. He managed to get one of them before he went down, and he might have got the second one. But, of course, he got shot in the ass by an SU-76M, which is kind of embarrassing, but there you go, it happens. So, um, that was quite a good game. Let's have a look at the, the last one, which was on Tundra. And in that one, he got a second-class tanker, he got a duelist, a fire for effect, and a bruiser. But, best of all, he ended up with a brubs in arms, because he managed to get three kills. And two of his teammates also managed to get at least three kills. In fact, they ended up with four apiece, which meant that uh, he ended up with the Brothers in Arms. Winning, so this one was 5,007, which again is Super Unicum standard. And if we look at the uh, team score, we can see that uh, the highest damage in the game was actually done by Terry's Tanks in this one. 2,602, 1,978 went to total party bottoms. 
and 1,445 went to Andromeda. So he didn't get the highest damage, he got the third highest damage, and he was just above the highest scorer on the enemy team, which is their looks, with 1,371. When it came to kills, it was shared between the Terry's tanks, the total party bottoms, and the Panzer 5-4 on the enemy team. All got three, four kills each. And then we've got Andromeda in second place with three kills. And when it came to base XP, it was the same order again. Terry's tanks with 1,453, total party bottoms 1,161, and then it's Andromeda with 1,026. So the same order as they were on damage. All above 1,000 base experience points. The highest the enemy could do was that Panzer 5-4, which is a rather overpowered medium tank, a premium one. And it's worth getting hold of one of those if you can. He got 549, was the best on his team. Andromeda fired 28 rounds, got 20 direct hits, 14 penetrations, damage of 1,445 hit points, all of it at close range. 11 hits received, 5 of them penetrated. Most of those shots actually penetrated through the side because he was very badly angled when he was attacking those Excelsiors. 4 non-penetrations, 2 hits by way of splash damage and 320 hit points of damage blocked by armour. He spotted 2 enemy vehicles, damaged 7 of the enemy, killed 3 and he earned 44,415 credits, got 22,208 from Holiday Ops, total of 66,623 credits altogether, but yet again he fired a lot of APCR and he ended up with a loss of 16,984 credits. Now I would say that this tank actually does have superb penetration with the standard ammo, 91 millimeters, it's very very good indeed, especially when you're up against tier 5 tanks. In fact, 91mm is still very good against tier 6 tanks for that matter. The, the only ones you really need to worry about is if you ever come across a tier 7 tank, but I'm not sure you're actually going to uh, in a tier 5 tank, but yes, those are the ones you really would have to worry about, and um, I think then you'd have to play defensively, but against tier 5 you can make it with standard ammo, and I can prove this to you because I've got a couple of replays which are coming up in the next video, and I'm using standard ammo most of those I do fire some premium but not a lot and I end up with a profit in each game and we can see Andromeda managed to get 1539 XP from that battle 616 for premium vehicle and 2155 experience points altogether so the Excelsior it's fast becoming a craze I think amongst some players that they're using it as a trainer to beef up their British heavy tank cr crews and I think it's definitely worth it. It's it's a fun tank to play. It's also very cheap to buy because they don't price it very, very heavily. But at this tier, it is a really fun tank. And if you want to mark a tank, this would be one to do because you'll not only get very good at playing a heavy tank, you'll actually have a lot of fun, especially if you're in platoon with a load of mates. So um, give it a go. Try it. You know, buy, a, buy an Excelsior. They're very, very cheap. And I'm sure you'll absolutely uh, adore it because it's just so funny. So um, if you enjoyed that replay or those replays, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Uh, leave a comment down below because it feeds the algorithms. And thank you for watching.